Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Rapsis System on Air, your Rapsid podcast. My name is René Brandt, and today I want to speak with you about flowering, the rapeseed flowering, one of the most beautiful periods in our business. Yeah, one year ago, ladies and gentlemen, we reached already full flowering in Germany. Today, we are seven to 10 days at least behind the average. What are the reasons? Mainly the cold April with temperatures up to four degrees below average. But ladies and gentlemen, before we start now planning our harvest 2021, we should not forget our homeworks. The rapeseed flowering application is the last step between us and a silo full of rapeseed. Therefore, I invite one of the main experts from Lithuania to speak exactly about this, the right flowering application. We will discuss yeah, what to do right now. I will try to reach his personal recommendations directly for you. And of course, we will also have a look on the small details for a successful rapeseed flowering application. So, ladies and gentlemen, have fun and enjoy our newest podcast. Alas, nice to have you here today in my little show. How are you doing? Well, like always, you know, better than yesterday, but worse than tomorrow. So it looks like every day is better, especially when we got a heat wave and it's plus 20 around plus 20 today, uh, it's uh, 11th of uh, May. Uh, and uh, today I'm on the fields, to be honest. And uh, today I saw quite nice crops of winter also drip, some uh, of your varieties as well. And after this morning, near Chaulet, I joined you for this podcast. And immediately after that, I'm going back to coming back to the fields and uh, we'll discuss together with our fellow partners, farmers, uh, what are uh, next works uh, on the fields, uh, which of them are coming and should be done immediately because quite cool and windy weather uh, was we, we, we were not able to, to, to apply uh, most of growth regulators, not only to winter also drip, uh, but also to our winter wheat as well. Oh, Anas, yeah, you're right. Uh, uh, great to hear that I uh, catch you here for a few minutes to, to speak with you uh, uh, about the rape seat. Uh, uh, so proud to have you here today. Um, and uh, it's good to hear that you are fine in this quite special uh, um, um, period with, with Corona. Anna, let's look ahead and uh, discuss a little bit about um, yeah, the next uh, months. April was now pretty cold. Flowering 2021 uh, will start uh, later, definitely uh, uh, later than uh, in comparison to the last years. So our customers asking now, hmm, with these cold temperatures in, in April, will that have influence on our production in 2021? Well, uh, I, I'm looking into this cold period of time uh, from two sides. Yes, one, one is uh, quite good and one is uh, not so good. So let's start with the uh, worst one. Uh, our harvest time should be a bit later. So it means that our, uh, uh, let's say, areas of winter also drip should decrease a little bit because of the time uh, we'll have to drill after the harvest of winter wheat, which should be later. Of course, there might be some droughts during the, uh, not May, because it's raining and it's quite good weather, but maybe if we'll have drought in uh, June or July, 
and vegetation periods of uh, winter crops will uh, stop immediately uh, in some period of time, uh, then we'll be able to drill everything and we'll be able to prepare the soils for, 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 for uh, the drilling. But on the other hand, uh, cool weather uh, gave some extra time for the plants for longer vegetation. And longer vegetation means uh, higher yields. And uh, I suppose that uh, even the insects and other pests were quite absent uh, out of the fields because of cool weather. Anas, uh, let me remind uh, our audience a little bit about you and uh, your position in, in Agro Concerners as one of the main uh, dealers in uh, Lithuania. You are working there as a pesticide uh, manager. And in your position, uh, you are also getting uh, a, a lot of these uh, internal experiences based on your own uh, trials, which you establish every year on your uh, own testing station. Yes. So uh, um, I'm asking myself now, um, we, we recognize uh, a trend in, uh, in the market for, um, yeah, more varieties with uh, more and more technical features. Uh, we, we see that the varieties become more and more healthy. Um, I'm interested now, do you check your candidates in your internal trials also for such uh, features like flowering? Yes, of course, uh, we do that. So we are measuring uh, the time uh, when variety starts to flower and when it ends. So we have uh, time, how long uh, does it flower? And uh, of course, uh, uh, we can differentiate varieties in between. Some of them are starting to flower quite early, others are starting late. Uh, some others are starting somewhere in the middle. And uh, I believe that every single farmer should uh, have different kinds of varieties. And the best illustration for me is the time from 2013. On 2013, I just started, it was maybe a couple of years while I was working as a group agronomist in agro then, and uh, I had a phone call from one of our customers and uh, he invited me to, uh, to, 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 to uh, investigate uh, one of the crops because uh, the idea was that this hybrid then we had uh, I suppose it was Artoga from Limograin quite often very nice variety and uh, the complaint was or some was about uh, uh, missing pots on the stem and uh, we found out that some of other hybrids later hybrids on the other side of the road doesn't have this empty place and the difference was uh, that another hybrid started to flower uh, three to four days later and uh, during these three or four days we had huge heat wave and during this heat wave all the pollens uh, got dry uh, and the pests uh, got dried and uh, the flowers was uh, infertile so they were sterile sterile uh, and it was a very good uh, time for me as a young specialist then to understand that we must differentiate all the risks. And a good reminder for us was last year when we had, uh, it was by the way, 12th of May, uh, exactly one year ago. And we had quite a lot of snow and frost. So this snow destroyed some of very nice also drip, not destroyed, but let's say made them, made it suffer. And uh, and those varieties who was later on the flowering, they were not so massive and uh, they felt much less damage there. So it's always good to have the differentiation there about varieties, not, and not only when we're talking about uh, harvest time, not only when we're talking about uh, winter hardiness and yield, but also time of the flowering as well. I'm now, um, I would like to know now from you, um, based on uh, Lithuanian conditions, um, what do you prefer? Um, do you like then more the early 
starting uh, flowering varieties or later ones? Which which one do you prefer personally? In the last uh, uh, three year, my personal favorites uh, became varieties who are flowering later and are later just because they are yielding better. Usually because they have usually they have longer uh, vegetation period. Uh, that's 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 good for um, good point for most of the farmers. But the thing is that in last three years we had extremely nice conditions to harvest, and uh, from that point of view, uh, farmers could drill these varieties these varieties early and they got massive and uh, there was not so many problems in the spring with them uh, and especially during the harvest uh, but uh, i believe that if we we'll have late harvest right now and uh, we'll, we, we would have a couple of next years when we will harvest late uh, this uh, trend should change a little bit and farmers uh, we'll come back and myself, I, I'll come back to some earlier varieties like Phantom, for example. Uh, and, 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 uh, but, but it's still working and it's not bad, you know. Uh, the difference there is 100, 150 kilos, sometimes 200. But uh, of course, we, always, we, we are always trying to get maximum because we're harvesting only once per year. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um... You, you mentioned already the differences uh, in, in the varieties. Uh, I can confirm that we, we have seen in our internal screening trials also um, this um, um, yeah, difference in start of flowering. Uh, um, there is a difference of up to 10 days uh, between first and, and last ones. And, uh, you mentioned that already that has that has impact uh, on on the further development of these varieties and on the yeah right uh, flowering uh, uh, application um yeah while varieties like phantom they they show in our internal trials uh, start of flowering already 98 days uh, after the 1st of january we have varieties like um, yeah, Duplo, your newcomer for next season, or uh, Phoenix Cell, they, they start four to five days later. Um, based on these uh, um, yeah, deep discussions in the market, based on these uh, um, upcoming challenges for uh, a successful rapeseed production, we discuss also a lot about uh, risk management and, and the right uh, strategies to balance the risk uh, here in the right way. That should also um, require a discussion about uh, the right varieties uh, outside in the field and, and different varieties. Mm -hmm. um, do you sensibilize in your discussions with uh, customers regarding this uh, point? Uh, start of flowering and, and uh, how do you um, um, yeah, um, highlight here then the right flowering uh, date? Right flowering date? Or uh, for, the, for the application. Ah, for the application. So uh, I believe that every single year and every single farm should take uh, their own decision based on moisture they do have. And, uh, and how many applications they are planning to do during the flowering. I prefer to do two applications, even if we are splitting the same dose rate of fungicide in half. So for example, we have uh, uh, extremely nice product, Pictor, it's called Pictor Active and it's registered also for two applications. So, and it's only one fungicide in the market, by the way, which is registered for two applications during the flowering. So most of our clients are using 0.7 uh, dose rate during the flowering. And uh, most of them, or many of them, are using it in the middle of flowering. Our suggestion is to increase dose rates to 0.8 and split them in half. So 0.4 in BBCH 63 and 0.4 in BBCH 67. So second part of the flowering. And uh, during uh, three-year trials, 
we can see very nice increase uh, of the yield when we're applying it twice uh, in fungicide. Okay, coming back to your question, uh, our idea is to look into weather and if it's dry, it's better to apply in the beginning of flowering and in the end of the flowering. If, if it's wet, we are applying in the beginning of flowering and in the middle of flowering because our goal is to always to cover first uh, blossoms because these first blossoms are doing biggest damage during the vegetation because first infection is the one which stays in the crop for the longest period of time. Okay. So 60, uh, beginning of flowering, 63, 25, 30 uh, percent of blossoms are flowering already. And, uh, and, and then second application, if it's wet in the middle of flowering, and if it's dry in the end of the flowering, it's, it's our recommendation. If it's, uh, let's say very wet, and the farmer is planning to apply it once, we should look for something in between from 30% to 50%, something in between, but still in the beginning of the infection. Okay. So, remark from my side would be like this. And uh, uh, by the way, I can see that on the table, you can, you have some papers which are published by us, by our team, I suppose, yeah. I prepared okay. myself. Yeah, yeah, so this uh, paper is prepared not only by me, but my colleagues as well. We have a very nice team in our Innovation and Research Center. And uh, Dr. Agla Petraitana, she was doing registration trials for winter ulcer drip and spring ulcer drip products and worked with varieties for 20 years in the Institute of Agriculture in Lithuania. So with all this knowledge, practice and experience, she came to our team and now we feel uh, one of the best experts in winter also drip <laughs> than ever. Okay. So good feeling for, for, for uh, our team and uh, knowledge we are spreading. We are really convinced about it. Uh, yeah, Anas, it sounds already uh, uh, interesting and uh, I can feel really uh, how much you like uh, this uh, detailed discussions about uh, the different uh, pesticides uh, and now here for, for fungicides. Um, I would like to uh, take one more uh, moment and to, uh, um, to get a little bit more feedback from your side. Um, what kind of questions coming to you from your customers, what are the main points what they would like to know regarding flowering application? So main question is when to spray, when to apply. And uh, it's, it's really, in most of the cases, it's hard to see uh, and it's hard to tell because uh, every single time uh, we have customers across the whole country and uh, uh, climatic conditions are different. Sometimes one field and another, even on the same farm level is a very different one. And it's quite hard to tell that we should apply fungicides now because one variety and another variety might be uh, very different on, on, on uh, development scale. Yeah. So when to apply is the most uh, common one. And second, uh, and quite common one, what, how to spray if we want to catch all the insects. Yeah. And uh, that's uh, another point why we are offering and advising our customers to apply fungicide twice, because you are always, uh, let's say, life pushes you to apply two insecticides yeah, during the flowering. And uh, if you are applying two insecticides, it's no reason to apply once uh, for fungicide. So you can apply fungicide twice as well and uh, only split this dose rate in half. But then I have uh, asked a small question. Is there not uh, also uh, this question coming up? Uh, okay, uh, second application by the end of the flowering, uh, um, 
what about the damage uh, of uh, uh, then of the rapeseed because of uh, driving through the rapeseed when it's already getting higher and higher? Is that then not also a complaint from the side of uh, farmers? Yes, uh, we, we have this kind of questions, but uh, uh, I know that some of the farms are going to apply some extra fertilization uh, products uh, after the flowering. So they're doing this damage in uh, both cases, yeah. Other farms has uh, higher um, sprayers. Alas, if we go uh, further, and, and think about um, this uh, flowering application from a other perspective. There is always this question about, um, yeah, uh, flowering application, it's a, somehow it's a compromise application. So on one side, we have this insurance strategy. So we don't know what kind of weather will come, how is the further development. But then also on the other side, we have also this option for addi additional yield. Mm -hmm. So uh, what is your opinion? Uh, what is your strategy? Would you go ahead, especially based on these current uh, commodity prices with a full dosage, full application, full power, or is also a reduced approach an option for you? So I believe that uh everything must be done smart. It doesn't matter uh, that uh, also drape costs 520 euro, for example, uh, right now in Lithuania, something around that. But uh, it doesn't matter. We still must think what we're doing, why we're doing and how we are doing. And uh, I believe that farmers uh, and uh, customers of ours will definitely uh, find out, uh, they will find the, the points where they should invest and where they can save. And, uh, but I believe the biggest challenge this year will still be um, insect damage, um, just because uh, areas of winter also drape is growing, still growing. I, I don't know how much we're expecting this year, 280, 270,000 hectares in Lithuania as well, like it was last year. And of course, now Nix went of our technology, especially uh, we feel lack of them in the flowering time. We have a Cetamifrid, which is still in the stem elongation uh, applications and it's, it's, it's more or less fine. But uh, we were thinking what to do and how to fight the insects. So we, we, we found out that we should treat the crop constantly. So application after application and these treatments must be strong ones because if we'll have cleaner crop before flowering, we will have less uh, pressure of the bugs during the flowering. So that was our biggest question of the year. Yeah, And uh, it's the common question farmers also gives for us how to fight the insects during the flowering. And our answer is to, we should go after the crop for whole vegetation period. We should not think about flowering application as something which will solve the problem. The problem could be solved partly only if we'll work during the season. So, like always, you know, Rene, uh, I'm, I'm, I like to talk. <laughs> so it takes uh, some time to, to, to answer your questions. I, I see already, I see, but no problem. But uh, uh, please uh, um, let me repeat my question again. So would you go ahead with full dosage, full power uh, application mm. or... Um, uh, and reduced approach. So what is your personal opinion in flowering? When we're talking about flowering, I see no reason to decrease those rates, especially if we we'll have uh, some rain or some moisture during the flowering. If it will be, I don't know, if we we'll have miracle right now and we'll have 25, 30 degree 
and uh, will have extremely dry conditions, then maybe one fungicide application in the middle of flowering could work quite well as well. Uh, especially those who have big uh, amounts of strobilurines. If you will have, uh, uh, let's say, warmer conditions, more than 22, 25 uh, degrees Celsius, you should avoid and farmers should avoid tebuconazole and metconazole because these uh, products are still uh, working as growth regulators and uh, they can uh, have some negative stresses over there. And uh, so very nice product like a filler, in my opinion, should be, shouldn't be used in this kind of cases. Also a mixture with tebuconazole, uh, like uh, tebu plus azoxy, tebu plus protio. Uh, we should avoid them in my opinion. But uh, products who has boscalid, who has uh, strobilurins like demoxystrobin or peraclostrobin, or a product like uh, diphenoconazole plus amistar gold, it's, it's fine. Uh, not amistar gold, it's, it's called amistar gold, so it's diphenoconazole plus azoxystrobin. They are fine in higher temperatures, but just be careful, look after the crop and uh, don't push it to the limit. You uh, mentioned uh, moisture, um, and uh, yeah, I have uh, um, learned uh, in the past that uh, there is just um, 24 hours moisture necessary in the in the rapeseed crop to uh, yeah to explode here a high risk for sclerotinia infection, and I think. Uh, uh, it's not only uh, uh, sclerotinia, but uh, uh, sclerotinia is one of the main um, threats in, in the flowering time. Uh, yeah, we need here a full protection for, for our flowering to have here then uh, later the best uh, yield production out of it. So that's why uh, um, target is clear. Um, protection uh, for the full flowering period. And uh, we, um, you mentioned already a little bit, okay, uh, best probably one good application date is the main flowering uh, BBCH 65. So uh, from the uh, point of, um, um, yeah, from the science uh, perspective, it's, everything is clear. So uh, um, main flowering application and then uh, we are safe. But, um, I'm asking now myself, is it really so easy? Because um, we know that uh, even the most uh, powerful products uh, based on uh, these active ingredients, Boscalit, or on the, the other side, we have also Fluopiram uh, from Bayer. Um, they have an efficiency of, what is it? Two, maybe three weeks. So well, I'm okay. asking now myself, um, yeah, is it then so easy just to go ahead with this main flowering and then uh, uh, to hope that uh, the rest of the flowering is protected? Or is maybe also this uh, splitting strategy, which you mentioned in your, in your papers, uh, uh, an option for, for, for the future? So, uh, Yes, I, 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 I believe that I already answered this question because, uh, you know, flower, what, what, when all seed rape starts to flower, yes, it's flowering for one day. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fertile for one day. And after it's, uh, I don't know, ready to grow, uh, we have blossoms around. Yes, and these blossoms are falling down. And uh, when they are coming, to the stem or not to the stem to the leaf and uh, we have stem we have very uh, good position here to come so these blossoms are coming and they starting to rot uh, after they are rotting they're damaging uh, winter's all seed rape uh, wax layer and through that point uh, sclerotinia comes to the plant. So I believe that every single farmer knows this theory because it's uh, told a lot by every single 
chemical salesmen, I believe, in, in, in uh, the continent. Uh, the thing is that uh, these blossoms, uh, they're coming up constantly. So we have part of also drape, which is already flowering and the other branches are coming later or side branches, they are coming later. And uh, that's the point why two time application always works, almost always works better. Uh, it's because of we are covering more blossoms by fungicide because our goal is to cover up the blossom, not to not only to cover up the plant, but blossoms are the key because they are taking this infection down uh, to the plant. And uh, when we are splitting this application, we are covering more blossoms, they are more successful uh, yeah. on control. And uh, that's, that's the idea. And that's the reason why uh, it's much better to, 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 to get one application when we have shorter periods of flowering. If the flowering is extended and it's, if it's not too hot, we should always think about two applications. They are much better. Yeah, I, I can uh, uh, confirm that uh, based on uh, results here for uh, special sclerotinia trials in Denmark, uh, it's also here that uh, these uh, strategies with this kind of splitting show the best efficiency and then finally also the best uh, profit. Um, I, um, I remember very well um, one time uh, um, that was 2016 in, uh, in the southwestern part of Germany. Uh, we, we had uh, um, um, a really huge appearance of sclerotinia outside in the field. Um, this uh, infection was able to destroy here, uh, really on a high level, the uh, rapeseed production. And, and farmers uh, asking themselves, okay, I, I applied my, my pictor uh, or I applied my propuls. Uh, so what, are, what is the other reason for it? Finally, later on, they found out it was too less water in the spraying tank. So too less water per hectare what they used. Yeah. So not enough water really to, to cover the full plant. What are your recommendations here in Aqua Concerners regarding uh, amount of water per hectare for this application? So for this application, we're never ever recommending to decrease uh, uh, water amount of the water to, le to less than 200. 200 liters per hectare is the minimum dose rate. Also, we're placing some uh, organic silicones to, to, to the tank. So these uh, materials, they are releasing the tension of the water and you can cover bigger areas. And as well, when we have such a complex plant like also drip, it has so many complex, it has complex architecture, yeah? so many small details and everything else and you need to cover uh, the blossoms extremely well. So these products like Silhouette Gold, for example, it's one of the best, if not the best uh, product uh, out there. Uh, and uh, we are placing uh, with Pictor Active 50 grams is enough because Pictor Active is, it has good formulation, but if you are uh, using products like uh, Bolid, like Amistad, like uh, uh, Oreos, these more primitive ones, older ones, uh, 100 grams per liter is, or per plant is, sorry, per hectare is, is fine if you are placing 200 liters. If you are placing 300 liters, which is even better, uh, you have to increase uh, this dose rate by 50%. So uh, 70 to 100 grams if you are applying it with Pictar Active, for example, or Campus Gold, or Propuls, also a very nice product. But uh, if you are applying it with uh, older products, not so well formulated products, uh, I suggest to place 150 then, just to keep uh, this percentage uh, uh, for 100 liter of water. And uh, it, 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 it works well, in my opinion.
I remember very well our last uh, visit uh, together in your internal trial station. Yes. We, we uh, checked here a little bit uh, um, the variety reactions of, of Mercedes. We discussed about uh, Phantom and so on. Um, and um, I, um, I was so uh, um, surprised uh, to see your approach that you checked your candidates uh, for full fungicide uh, intensity once. And you also check them with, without fungicides uh, mm -hmm. to see here some uh, more specific variety reactions. Um, can you confirm now, based on your experience in your internal trials, this uh, uh, marketing uh, points like uh, greening effects, uh, higher vitality of the varieties after such uh, flowering application? Can you uh, uh, confirm this? Uh, uh, improved pot package, lower harvest losses, and so on. So do you see that in the field then after this uh, flowering application? So what I can definitely assure you that uh, uh, the stems which are left after the harvest, you know, uh, they are greener, definitely, if you are placing their uh, high loads of uh, strawberries into, in, into that. and. Uh, Diseases like uh, sclerotinia, foma, uh, they are not spreading or they're not finishing the life of the plant so rapidly. Yeah, so it's, it's slowing down just a little bit. It's, it's not a big uh, difference, but still. Also, when we're talking about uh, harvesting, uh, the big problem sometimes becomes uh, farmer himself. Uh, not not the problem, but the view. Yeah, how how I'm looking into my business. For example, uh, they're spraying uh, high loads of strawberries on the flowering. Then they have some extensions on the harvest time. So not all the time it's possible to harvest. And especially the biggest problem it becomes when neighbor of the farmer is already harvesting. And it does not matter that neighbors also drape started to flower one week earlier because of uh, lack of the nutrients and uh, many other questions, but it sums up. And for example, we have some eco farms here in Lithuania and they're harvesting one uh, month almost earlier than uh, intensive farms. And also client uh, himself I'm visiting today, he was starting to harvest his also drape uh, the last one, almost the last one in the region, because of uh, intensive technology. And uh, strawberries was one of the components, but uh, I'm happy mm, to tell that his average also drip yield was 4.4 tons. And it was really good to, 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 to have this because everywhere around was free, 200 kilos less, 300 kilos less. And you know, it's, it's still money. So sometimes it's better to, to wait uh, a little bit longer and uh, harvest a little bit later, but uh, to get more and better quality, more oil content as well. And when we're talking about pot shattering, uh, you mentioned, uh, yes, it, it helps a little bit because the pots, they're not drying so fast and uh, you don't have these rapid changes because pot is opening when the upper layer of the pot is dried, dried by sun. And if it, it moves a little bit, because this area, top area shrinks a bit. And if it shrinks a bit, tension appears. Yeah? And it poof, pops up like Mercedes is very good example for that. It's, it's one of uh, most, elite <laughs> varieties who shatters easily, but it doesn't matter if farmers still harvesting better yield. Yeah. Okay. So it shatters in, in this way. So if we have greener plant and the upper layer is not so old, it's not reacting so sensitively and uh, this tension is reduced. Yeah, I agree, I agree. 
you uh, mentioned eco farms uh, and uh, that's uh, um, another point uh, where i would like to uh, speak a little bit with you about um, we um, discussed already several times about these uh, um, developments on the on the political uh, uh, level so we discussed uh, about green deal and uh, the further developments of, of pesticides and then the, and the future we uh, we see now right now in uh, in in switzerland uh, a big uh, movement there's a preparation for a new referendum where they will uh, decide somehow about the further strategies uh, of, of pesticide usage. So they, they really ask with or without uh, pesticides in, in uh, Switzerland for future. And, and you mentioned that uh, yeah, you, you see also some increasing in this uh, organic farming. Uh, we, we see that uh, on a European perspective. We see it also in the Baltics. Um, in my opinion, I think the rapeseed market has to adapt because the political decisions are already made somehow. And um, from my point of view, I think rapeseed can do it. Rapeseed has potential for that. My question now to you is, do you discuss that already in agro concerners internally or did you start already to prepare somehow your business for for future for more organic rapeseed? Yes, we started. Okay. <laughs> Would you like to share more with us? So I, I, I think uh, <clears throat> the first thing every single farmer will have to do during this green deal is to fix up uh, our broken crop rotations. It's uh, the first job to do. And if all seed drape will come back to the field every five years, we'll have half of this problem we, we do have right now, uh, especially with pests and insects. Just, uh, I can remind you, Renan, I don't know if you know, because I know that you came to Rapul team quite, uh, not, not so long time ago, uh, when you're talking about Baltics, but uh, I remember when we had 140, 120,000 hectares of spring also drip. And the biggest problem there was uh, uh, flea beetle, pollen beetle, yeah, Poll pollen beetle. And uh, resistance it got for all pyrethroids. It was massive. Uh, nothing worked there. We could not. Uh, control these insects anymore because of resistances uh, they, they, they got. And uh, when area of spring also drape disappeared or was reduced drastically by the farmers, right now we have much better efficacy against pollen beetle of all classes of insecticides. It's already came back almost to the previous efficacy. The problem is uh, right now if we, we will we have uh, it's it's the same plant of applications and uh, you know smart farming i believe comes from smart choices and smart strategy for a longer period of time for the farm and the problem here is that one farm can't change it because these resistances comes you know in bigger areas than one farm and this uh, insects migrates so yes, crop rotation is the first thing we will have to think about. And uh, I believe that uh, in our previous meeting on the podcast, I mentioned that uh, in this case, uh, companies like Rapul will uh, help a lot with new genetics without any doubts. Healthcare plants uh, will uh, do their work by themselves. Also, if we'll be able to reduce uh, amounts of nitrogen we are applying, it will help a lot as well. Uh, I don't know about your graphs you are showing. You, you have not convinced me that it's working too well still, but I believe that in, uh, if, if you have this goal, uh, it, will, it will come in the next five years maybe. 
So I believe that you are, you are helping here a lot and uh, you will move there and Agroconcernas will move also to this direction without any doubts. We always are trying to work on smarter way. And I believe we've, we've won a hell of distributor, uh, not when we're talking only about Lithuania, but in many other countries. When we're, we are comparing ourselves to others, we see that we are investing quite a lot into this know-how and uh, efficient efficiency and the decisions we are making. So yes, we, we are going to do it, and uh, of course. Um, I'm looking forward uh, to participate then on a presentation from you speaking about organic rapeseed production as a as a guy with such full confidence for for uh, uh, chemical um, solutions so but okay uh, one comment one but comment from my side uh, Anas. To expand here just a little bit just a couple of more sentences i believe that uh, organic farm is not a panacea you know like uh, the best thing ever uh, as well i'm not thinking that uh, intensive uh, farm is the best thing ever I think that all the treatments must be done when it's necessary and we have to invest this money and efficacy into the crop when it's needed. So the thing is right now, and the biggest problem right now is that, that we don't know when it's needed. And uh, here uh, technologies will change us and our work in next 10 years. Yeah. And I believe that farms and farmers, I, I spoke with last week uh, I spoke with some of our partners and I said you know things are, go are going to change and they said no Arnas you know you are crazy but uh, believe in me it's going to change and uh, we are going to work differently all of us and I don't believe that treatments like crop protection products will be out of the business uh, the question is different, that we will use these kind of products, then it's necessary to use. And uh, so I'm waiting for, for, for that time, because uh, I believe that we'll be healthier, we'll have a better environment, and believe in me, agroconcerners will know how to do their work and how to earn money, because we are also businessmen, not only great agronomists. So, um, yeah, I'm quite sure that uh, Agro Concerners uh, will be a, a part of these uh, new uh, developments, uh, that's for sure. Before we go further, Anas, one comment from my side regarding your statement with yeah. the crop rotation and, and uh, um, the, the impact of uh, crop rotation. Yes, sure, that, that is definitely one. Uh, um, um, one opportunity somehow to uh, uh, regulate here the, the um, appearance of, of pests, for example. But uh, I can uh, tell you from, from Germany, we, we reduced uh, the, the amount of rapeseed from a few years ago. We had 13% of the total uh, oh, yeah. uh, a, um, land was, uh, was with rapeseed. Now we are on a level of 7% and we still have our uh, problems with the different uh, uh, pests and so on. So um, it's, it is not that easy just to uh, uh, reduce here the amount of rapeseed in the field and then everything is fine. It, it is more complex, but you mentioned that already um, things have to develop. Uh, we have to learn more and, and then we will find also solutions for the new conditions. That's for sure. What I had in mind, you know, that also drape, not uh, only the area should be decreased. I'm not talking maybe about only also drape, but wheat after wheat, uh, legumes, amount of legumes in our crop rotation, uh, catch crops. Mm -hmm. uh, then we are talking about the uh, fields where also drape comes too often yeah if, if we would make it in more smart in smarter ways let's say and uh, project life of our farm for next 10 years uh, and the fields and the crop rotation uh, it, it would become better i believe and the, the problem here comes that look winter also drape costs 500 euro per ton Okay, next year we will drill 350,000 hectares in Lithuania, maybe just because uh, of the high price. 
But the thing is that if farm has long-term strategy for its car crop rotation for next 10 years, and uh, it won't be able to go after these opportunities, yeah. But uh, it will be more sustainable and uh, this kind of farm will be more stable itself. So it won't be ups and downs, but let's say steady growth in long period of time. So it's, it's according to strategy. Yeah. Alas, um, for the moment already, uh, many thanks uh, for this interesting uh, discussion. And, and we are really already uh, in a uh, very deep, uh, detailed level. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to use the moment to uh, come down a little bit and have a break and uh, yeah, play a new edition with my guest Anas uh, of our little game Rapeseed for Experts, the Rapeseed quiz by Raps Assistant. Anas, I would like to invite you for a new edition. Uh, I prepared five small questions. Would you like to participate? <laughs> You know, I, I saw some other podcasts where uh, you asked some of these questions to other experts and uh, I was listening to them I, and I was like, I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> so I'm a little bit scared about this. Uh, you, you prepared, but let's go. I'm a brave man, I suppose. Okay, great, great. Then, yeah, let's go. Okay, Tell okay. us. We uh, spoke already a lot about uh, uh, the fungicides. Uh, uh, you highlighted a little bit uh, boscalite as one of the most powerful ingredients. Yes. I have uh, um, checked a little bit here the, the internet and found out that boscalite was at the beginning more developed for, for wine yards or so, uh, for yes. a totally other uh, uh, part of, of uh, business. Um, do you have an idea when was the first registration of oh. Boscalit? It should be quite old. It's uh, one of the first SDHAs, uh, if I remember right. And uh, it was wine yards as well. It's used quite a lot for sun sunflowers right now against Claritinia, by the way. By the way, I think uh, something like uh, 80s should be 1980. Nineteen eighty-eight, ninth something, just okay. for nineteen uh, nineties or in the somewhere on that place. Maybe I'm okay. wrong. I don't know. We will see. We will see a solution. Or uh, the answer will come later. Okay. Um, let's uh, let's speak a little bit further about uh, Boscalit. Uh, I have found out uh, an interesting uh, figure. They uh, made some uh, European uh, trial network to, to investigate here the, the yield effect of uh, such uh, application on, on the rapeseed. And um, I have here data from uh, 2003 to 2018 on this European uh, level uh, with more than 720 trials where they investigate here this yield effect. What do you think? How big was the yield effect? Uh, what kind of dose rate of boscalid averagely was used? 250 grams? 100? 150? 500? I think they, uh, when they spoke about uh, uh, this uh, picture or we call it uh, yeah, Cantus Gold, uh, I think the, yes. the, the, the the normal dosage. In the whole Europe, it's Pictar, and uh, in, only in Lithuania and Baltics it has uh, the name of Campus Gold and Pictar Active was next generation of this fungicide in the whole Europe. Uh, but uh, if it's Pictar, then we have uh, Demoxystrobin next side on the Boscalid, so it's not the solo Boscalid. Solo Boscalid was Cantus, uh, the premium brand from BSF. And it was very successful here in Lithuania for a very long time. So I believe if it's Cantus Gold, it should be something 11, 12 percent. Maybe. Can you, can you give that in, uh, in uh, uh, tons per hectare? 500 hecta uh, kilograms, something like four, four to six, something in between. Okay. Should be. But of course, 
it's if it's it depends on climatic conditions of course if it's wet it could be to 15 18 something sometimes even 30 but if we're talking about average it should be something around 12 11 okay, okay. In my presentations in the past, uh, I, I used uh, a lot uh, German figures uh, to speak about uh, flowering and uh, the effect of uh, flowering applications. And, and you give me uh, always the answer, okay, uh, nice figures, but uh, German data, so uh, far away from conditions in the Baltics. That's why I uh, took some time to, to catch some uh, uh, data here from Sweden. Uh, SFO, um, they investigate uh, here every year also the, the yield effect of different flowering applications. And 2019 uh, gives me some interesting results, which I would like to share with you. So they checked here um, one liter per hectare pro pulse or one liter per hectare picture active. Mm -hmm. and, and both applications were really dominating here the trials. Yeah. Their best uh, applications on the market, in my opinion. Yeah. The interesting was for me net income of both applications was 92 euros uh, for propulse and 117 for the picture active. Yeah. Now, question to you. They also test the effect of 0 0.3 kilograms cantus. And my question to you. What do you think? How big was the effect of this 250 grams pyroclostropine in the pictoactive? So how much bigger was the, the income of pictoactive versus cantus? You see, that's another question. It's a uh, gross, uh, gross uh, or it's net uh, income. So you are taking out the price of fungicide or it's, uh, Yep, so the net income. So for Victor Active 117, how much bigger was or how much lower was it for Cantus? I think something around uh, 113, 114, something like that. It, it depends. Uh, 2019 was quite dry here. How was, what, what was in Sweden? Because if it was dry, Pyracostrobin had to, to do uh, bet, had to give better result than if, if if it was too wet. I suppose it could be even similar um, efficacy. But uh, it, okay, let's say 12, 13%, something like that. Because I know that Boscolit is a damn great product. Okay. <clears throat> So um, now uh, enough about uh, fungicides. Let's go a little bit in my business and speak I'm... about uh, rapeseed plants. Um, we uh, uh, we know also um, this discussion about the pot package and and to uh, to reach also the bottom part of the pot package and and to uh, develop here also uh, um, the yield. What do you think? How big is the share of the lower pots at the bottom on the total pot package? So how much pots are here at the bottom of the pot package? In percentage? Yes. Hmm. 20. Okay. No, I'm uh, telling the answer. I'm trying to scan you and uh, understand uh, how precise it was. <laughs> <laughs> was not too bad. So last question. Uh, plant oil prices are uh, going crazy on the global stock exchange. Um, by the end of April, I, I marked here uh, rapeseed oil was traded with uh, a price of 1,213 euros per ton, 75% more than in comparison to the year before, same date. Um, my question to you, how much rapeseed oil we can get from one hectare? 
Rapeseed oil? Yes, rapeseed oil for, for, diesel, for yeah. a nice salad or ah, whatever oil. for cooking. Well, it's, it, it's uh, what average yield of seeds. <laughs> Let's speak about average yield in, in Europe, 3.2 tons. 3.2 tons, okay. Let's we see. use now a calculator. Okay, I, I, <laughs> it's working quite well as well. So, okay, if we have uh, all content like 40, let's say base content, yeah, 42, uh, 3.2 tons. I don't know, 800 liters, something, 900 liters. Okay, great, thanks. Thanks, Alas. When will we get answers, René? I'm uh, a student, you know, and I'm uh, uh, from this younger generation who wants everything uh, immediately. <laughs> uh, you have to uh, uh, cool down a little bit. Uh, the answers will come in the next uh, couple of days on our Facebook channel. Okay. Okay. Alas, Thanks again. Uh, um, yeah, uh, great uh, that you took the time here and, and to participate on our little quiz. Let's come back to our yeah, to our topic and speak about the flowering and uh, what to do. Um, let's uh, uh, leave uh, the, the the fungicides behind us and uh, speak a little bit about uh, insecticides. Um, we uh, um, definitely, we have to pay attention when we speak about flowering, about the cabbage seed weevil, for example, or the prosica pot midge. Um, you mentioned also it already that uh, unfortunately we lose here also uh, the neonic as an option to, to control here the insects in, in the flowering. Mm -hmm. um, my question now, yeah, and, and now, what options left for our farmers? Can you give us a little update? It's not many products who are still registered in Lithuania uh, for this period of time. I, I believe it's uh, two main actives uh, who are still here. So it's Tauflvan a lot from Maverick. And another one is Maverick or Avura. Two brands are registered here in Lithuania. And another one is uh, Gamma Cicolotrin, uh, Pyrotroid from uh, FMC. And it's, uh, it has two brand names, it's Vantex and Nexide. So, and I believe it's only two of these, uh, if I remember right. We have some applications, some products who could be applied after the flowering, but uh, during the flowering only these two actives. So our recommendation is to make a blend of those two. We, and it's quite tricky because we never had an experience with that, but we know that these dose rates we have, and our recommendation is 0.15 of Maverick, Maverick uh, so 150 grams per hectare and uh, 50 grams per hectare of Nexide. It should be overkill for all insects who are uh, damaging the crop. So we will send. Uh... Okay, uh, other kind. I'm trying to remember in English, but uh, these two, two, two main common insects should should fell down. The problem with these two products are that they are working for temporary period of time especially next side, it's a uh, peritroid. Uh, but what I'm happy about that they are both stable in, in the light and they're both stable in the high temperatures. So it looks like that uh, even if we have heat waves, this product should work in the mixture with uh, uh, organosilicon, for example, silver gold or fungicide and fungicide, they should do their work uh, as well. And uh, if some farmers will go after the insect during the flowering, my recommendation is to use not less than 200 liters of water, uh, increase it to 300 sometimes even, especially if you have huge also drape and massive one. And this year it looks like we will have some of those. Mm -hmm. so 
don't don't worry uh, drive more <laughs> with the tractor drive more with the cisterns and the water but uh, use it wisely because not only of be, not only because of fungicide and its efficacy but also because of the bugs Anas, we um, we know um, that um, insecticides um, from today they don't have this um, efficiency like insecticides in the past uh, there's also this uh, development of uh, shifting of the pests uh, uh, according to the uh, active ingredients. Um, I would like to know, is there any further possibilities uh, uh, available so that we uh, maybe with some other tools can increase here the efficiency? I'm thinking about additives or is uh, maybe, for example, liquid nitrogen an option, maybe in this case, to, to make everything a little bit more sticky to end, end here, based on that, to increase the efficiency? Well, uh, uh, it's a good point, but uh, I already mentioned, we use, usually in our practice, we're using Cordano silicones. They're quite cheap. Um, and also their purpose is for that. Uh, yes, to, to, to stick the product, to spread the liquid. And uh, sometimes farmers are experimenting with uh, some other kind of adjuvants. They are figuring out by themselves, you know, that, for example, I know one farmer who buys uh, cheap uh, product to, 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 to stick, you know, these papers on the wall, how it's called in English, wallpaper, yeah? to, to stick wallpapers. And, uh, he uses it to apply herbicides in uh, cereals. And I'm like, why it still costs almost nothing, but in efficacy. And uh, even you should consider sometimes that you can, might do some damage to the crop when you are experimenting. So the yeah, our ideas are good, but we prefer to use organosilicons. It's super spreader. It's great to have this kind of product in your warehouse all the time, not only for OCG, but also for cereals when you're applying uh, uh, the ears, yeah, for fusarium. It's also very complex uh, to cover all uh, the spots, yeah, so this kind of products works very well. Yeah, and uh, what about liquid nitrogen? Well, I'm not uh, so familiar with that. Uh, you, you, I don't know, to be honest, uh, what do you have in mind, which kind of product? We, we have this uh, ammonium nitrate uh, um, urea solution called AHL in Germany, mm -hmm. uh, with, I think that is 28% uh, nitrogen inside. Mm. And um, yeah, I, I remember the farmers which make experiments with that, they, they go on a dosage of 10 to, to 20 liters. So just a, a small uh, nitrogen dosage, not that much, but they use it somehow to make this uh, whole uh, spraying more sticky and, and more so that it stays longer on the crop and not immediately uh, go and pull it down. down. Yeah. So yes, that's, that's the case why we're using these super spreaders like silver gold or something like that. There's plenty of them on the market. One are uh, in, as a better, let's say, quality products. Others are not so good, in my opinion, because you can check how well they're spreading. And uh, silver is uh, like crazy. If, if, <laughs> if you place too big dose rates into the tank, it's uh, evaporates in the air it's not even reaching the crop you know so it's a super duper product in my opinion okay then uh, um, next question one step further uh, what is about the ph value um, we we know that uh, um, for best efficiency of, of insecticides you need this uh, um, yeah right uh, ph value uh, more acid uh, um, so more lower uh, pH value. Um, what are your recommendations here in this case? 
So my recommendation is always to add some, to, to fix uh, the pH value if you are applying pyrethroids without any doubts, especially delta metrin. It's quite uh, not, not so resistant for it, but also not so sensitive. But still, if you are applying delta metrin, it's, it must, it's something you must do. Uh, but uh, also, when we're talking even about uh, growth regulators in winter with uh, applications, we have to fix that uh, because uh, we can see that when we have hard water and the pH value is above eight, we have these values in the northern part of Lithuania, near Pokrois, Akmene. We, 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 we have uh, this kind of water even around Tonus in some cases. Uh, it might uh, burn uh, the leaves a little bit and it, it gives extra stresses, okay. especially if you're making high loads of something. So just, in my opinion, it must have solutions in the farm. And I'm happy that in the last couple of years, farmers started to pay attention because, uh, you know, they started to ask the questions, why we have uh, this kind of uh, brown dot here? Why we have this? And sometimes uh, when people are blaming uh, the crop or sometimes even fungicide and they're telling, you know, DTR appeared, uh, these brown small spots, we found out that it becomes, uh, it's ph physiological spots because of the water and uh, the huge amounts of uh, uh, products who are in the tank at once, seven, eight products, nine products, so if you are mixing up so many products into the tank, you have to fix the pH uh, on the end. Anas, um, yeah, we uh, discussed now uh, already a lot about uh, different uh, aspects of uh, flowering application. Yeah. Uh, we are coming now closer to the end of our little discussion here today, and I would like to uh, use the moment also to yeah to look ahead and speak a little bit about uh, uh, what's coming in 2022, and yeah, and to speak with you a little bit about our new uh, yeah, newcomer uh, Duplo, which we will bring to the market uh, this summer. Mm -hmm. um, Duplo as uh, one of the uh, new turnip yellow virus hybrids from our Rapool breeding um, convinced with a really attractive package of these uh, disease resistances like turnip yellow virus, FOMA, but we have also pot shatter resistance, we already spoke about that. And, and on top of this, uh, we have uh, further attractive uh, agronomic uh, features like unbelievable outstanding growth uh, um, and, and uh, development before winter. We have lodging resistance as well, and also drought tolerance, uh, which was definitely a plus point uh, in the last year. Um, and yeah, finally on top, for our customers, definitely the most important point uh, is yield. And uh, here Duplo convinced last year very well in the official trials in Lithuania. I remember, I think it was with plus one ton more than in comparison to the standard variety. So really an uh, attractive result in the first year. And uh, I would like to discuss now a little bit with you. We know Duplo is uh, one of these big biomass types. Uh, we have uh, this, um, uh, really strong robustness inside uh, uh, with uh, uh, high stress tolerance. And, and we have this pot, uh, uh, pot shattering resistance at the end as well. If I take this variety now and, and compare that uh, uh, or bring it together with the attractive commodity prices, which we have right now, what would you recommend now then for, for flowering application? Would you go ahead uh, with a full uh, application again, really to take out uh, the most profit? Or would you here maybe also look for some uh, reductions in, in the application? No, in this applications, I uh, wouldn't uh, look for reductions. We can look for uh, some compromises uh, during whole vegetation, but this uh, application 
in my opinion, is uh, the last one which places the jewel on the crown. And uh, I believe from our concern aside, we'll have a uh, recommendation Victor Active 0.5 plus 0.5, uh, two times application together in the mixture with insecticides, uh, blends or, or straight ones. And uh, yeah, we can use Maverick twice, I suppose, if I remember right the label. We can use it twice during vegetation, so both on uh, flowering could, could be there. And uh, I think that we should invest. And uh, we are investing by ourselves. We have to remember that agroconcernas are farmers as well. And our goal is to be efficient farmers. So we are investing and we are planning to invest. Even those farms who are who usually are applying 0.7 liter of picture active uh, per hectare. It's, it's re really good application, but uh, I believe we can increase to 0.8, uh, even one liter. Why not? Today we have best, best time to farm. It's, uh, you know. I'm not sure if it's the best time, but it's definitely, it uh, makes fun now to make uh, farming with uh, um, current conditions outside in the field and, and with the commodity prices, uh, it's definitely more fun. And I believe that every single time, best time is now, because now you can make some kind of decision. Even uh, when we've been discussing about your quiz and I keep that in mind and thinking about these percentages <laughs> and uh, what kind of uh, other answers, reasonable answers could be. I know that when I'll know them, these answers, I'll be a little bit smarter. So it's 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 like always. Right now we're uh, asking each other, yes, if we should invest. I believe right now. I believe we should. We'll know in the autumn. That's that's. Well, uh, I I I totally agree. You uh, you you uh, you have. Uh, I have the same uh, opinion as you. So uh, uh, with such a uh, high price for, for rapeseed and with a variety where we have this extra yield on top. So it doesn't, it, it makes definitely sense to invest here and to uh, um, get the most. I, I, can tell, I can tell this, uh, René, that usually when we are checking one-time application and two-time applications on fungicide, yeah? Uh, in between, we have three, four percent usually. Uh, usually, it's around uh, 111, 112 of one time application. And then, two time application, it's uh, 117, 115, something like that. So, we have a small gap there, and this gap costs and it brings money. Also, another uh, big thing is uh, we have to warn far farmers this year was really good prices for all seed rape during the whole period. So some farms sold the uh, winter, some of their yield of 2021 uh, for 380. Some of them sold for 400. Some of them sold for 450. Right now it's 500. Be careful about uh, uh, taking these contracts because uh, sometimes hail happens, uh, sometimes uh, some, something must when everything uh, looks too good some sometimes something happens yeah so if you have uh, crop insurance uh, why not just contract it but uh, i believe that save amount is two two and a half three tons is quite a lot already but two and a half ton is quite safe amount to contract from the early perspective and even today i was in the crops where we're expecting uh, five, five points, something tons. Yeah, it's, it's really, really promising and very best crops. And, uh, but still, uh, it's good to expect right now, but it's much better to know that you have everything in your warehouse. Thank you, Anas. With these words, I would like to uh, close here our discussion today. Anas, Again, many thanks uh, for your participation. It was a pleasure for me to discuss with you about uh, the right uh, flowering applications and what what to do and uh, where are the, the little details. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we hope that you enjoy our little discussion here today and uh, may we were able to deliver you some benefits for your rapeseed production in future. Anas, some last words from your side. So, very last word of every person is amen. Yeah, should be. But uh, in my opinion, we have uh, very nice weather right now. Use it, uh, spray. Your, let, let's do our job together, last one. But uh, I wish to remind you that we are on the social media. Help us, help Rapul, leave some comments for Facebooks, YouTube's algorithms. They, are, they do really like it. So just uh, share it if it's good with your friends or family. Because today what we've been speaking, I believe that it's a, a really nice example of honest cooperation we're doing with Rapul for a very long time. And uh, we are always open with each other. And to be honest, Rene, I have not uh, uh, felt this hour, maybe hour and a half, how, how long do we speak? But uh, it's uh, flew by a second. So next time let's meet and uh, let's chat about this kind of topics. Thanks, Anas. Thank you so much yeah. for your nice Good words. Good luck, everyone. Thanks. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, now let me summarize a few points uh, based on the discussion with uh, our guest Anas here today. Yeah, flowering application is a complex topic and uh, influenced by several factors which uh, require a customized uh, decision uh, finally to find here the best uh, strategy. Yeah, um, we cannot uh, forecast uh, the weather, so uh, um, we, we have to keep that in mind. The risk for late infections uh, is always there and, and uh, definitely if we keep in mind these high commodity prices, economic uh, losses uh, are, are really uh, high if we do not uh, uh, the applications in the best way. So uh, do not uh, make here the mistake and really take the opportunity to benefit from this attractive price level right now. And uh, yeah, uh, we have heard that uh, from our guest Anas, uh, please invest in your rapeseed and uh, in your harvest 2021. Um, take the opportunities uh, and go ahead with a powerful protection with uh, these uh, strong fungicides like uh, Pictor, we have heard Pictor Active in, in Lithuania or also the other uh, products. Application date um, should be uh, uh, oriented uh, to the specific variety in the field in order really to, uh, uh, to have uh, the best protection. And uh, of course, yeah, keep an eye on the appearance of, of insects in your field and put that uh, together in the best way also to protect here the bees in your rapeseed field. Then uh, some uh, small words from my side, um, dear Hubs assistant audience, um, spring 2021 remain exciting. Uh, just two figures. The yield forecast, uh, uh, despite this uh, strong winter, they are still on a uh, very high level and it looks promising also for harvest 2021. In comparison to the long-term average, our forecast for the coming harvest is still plus 5%. And if we keep in mind this uh, already mentioned commodity prices, yeah, we are here 37% above the last year. Rapeseed in spring 2021 makes fun. The outlook is positive. The yield forecasts are still on a promising level and also the commodity prices going really crazy. So if we took that together with the market conditions right now, it looks promising for the rapeseed. So do not miss here the chance and implement some of our discussed recommendations here from today into your own management. Ladies and gentlemen, many thanks from my side. It was again a pleasure. I wish you all the best for your harvest 2021. Stay healthy. Best regards here from Germany. 
your Rapsassistent.